We have six O-Days in the wild, and it's another hot O-Day summer. It's the August Patch Report. Let's get to it. Hello, everyone. I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our unofficial patch wrangler. We've got a moderate size release, 80 some CVEs from both Adobe and Microsoft. So we've got a lot to get through, including some really interesting O days that are circulating in the wild. Yes, six of them. That's right. You heard it. So let's start talking about Adobe first because, well, A comes before M, and I like to do things alphabetically. So Adobe had a pretty big release 11 security updates with 71 CVEs in total. The largest is Commerce, uh, which has about uh, 23, I think, CVEs in that, including a bunch of critical rated to go along with some moderates. The one I'm really concerned about, though, if I am going to be concerned about it, is going to be the uh, Adobe patch for Reader and Acrobat because PDFs are so commonly used in ransomware. So I consider that to be pretty interesting. Uh, none of these are under active attack or publicly known at the time of the release. So it's a big release, but this one's not too bad. Microsoft, however, is 89 or 90, depending on how you count those CVEs. Microsoft says 90, so who am I to call them a liar this time? Um, but uh, we've got a few critical rated ones, but six in the wild, okay? And we're gonna start with this scripting engine memory corruption vulnerability, which is interesting because uh, it resurrects IE. You have to hit edge in IE mode. Now, if only there were certain regions of the world where that is common, check the uh, acknowledgements on this and you will find that, uh, oh, it's that region. Yes, Korea, that is a common configuration for a lot of banking applications in Asia. So that is where that is. Also, you'll notice that this patch and several others this month have a fix for Windows 11, the 24H2 update, which isn't out. So why is there a patch for it? Well, it turns out that Copilot Plus devices have this version of Windows installed. So that is why you will see uh, several of the patches this month have that on it. Uh, then we have a few uh, elevation of privilege bugs, uh, L LPEs, local privilege escalations, whatever you want to call them. One is in the ancillary function driver. Uh, if you can find a Microsoft uh, old timer, ask him how it got that name. It's pretty funny. Um, and these bugs are typically paired with a code execution bug. So you would get the code execution to call this, which would elevate your privileges to system. And then you would run your ransomware, malware, whatever to take over the box. So we have three of these. One is in AFD.sys, one is in the kernel, and the other one is in the power dependency coordinator. So if you're not familiar with PDC, that is something uh, for modern standby. Essentially, it's the one that says, you know, instant on when you put it to sleep and that sort of thing. Uh, now, all three of these are actively exploited in the wild. We don't know how widespread it is. I'm going to assume that they're being paired with some sort of RCE. Perhaps it's embedded in a PDF doc like we've seen before or an office doc or maybe a project doc. What? Yes, there is a zero day being exploited in Microsoft Project. And I'm excited because as a former PM, I used project all the time and I cannot imagine somebody getting a dicey project file and opening it when you've turned off macros, uh, when you've disabled your macro warnings and all of the stuff and you've enabled, oh my goodness. So first of all, people, if you haven't disabled macros running from the internet, stop and go do that. Uh, also make sure that your VBA macro notification settings are enabled and set correctly. Please go do that. Uh, and then if you are opening random project files from dicey sources, I need you to stop and go retake your, retake your phishing training because whew, I can't believe it. But yeah, that, that's, that's where we're at. So here's a full list of the CVEs. This is a big old chart. You'll notice we've got six of them here that are uh, actively exploited. We've got a few that are publicly known too, uh, including that Windows line printer daemon, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail go through the critical ones. There are a couple critical ones here that are really, really interesting. You see those CVSS 9.8s. So let's get down to those. As always, I have marked the ones that require extra. Uh, so you see that little cross there for CVE 2024-38117. That uh, 38197, excuse me. That means you have to do something else. In that case, you're just going to have to manually apply the patch. It's not automatic. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of things here to look at couple moderates get down to the chromiums that are being updated as well. So now uh, let's talk about those CVSS 9.8s. The first one is in Windows TCP IP. This allows a remote unauthenticated user 
to get elevated code uh, execution on an affected system with zero user input. That makes it wormable. Now, good news here is it's in IPv6, so if you disable IPv6, you're not affected. Bad news is, is IPv6 is enabled on just about everything these days, so that's a problem. Now, it's a similar attack scenario for the reliable multicast transport driver, but in this case, it's not as severe. It's, it's still a CVSS 9.8 bug, but there's a couple of mitigating factors here. The first is that you have to have a listening service listening for PGM to be vulnerability. So that's gonna be a bit less likely. Now the line printer daemon is a CVSS 9.8, same attack scenario, still wormable. However, LPD isn't enabled or even installed by default. That's why Microsoft knocked it down from critical to important in their severity levels, because it's not a default scenario. However, if you are running LPD, you need to take this as a critical update uh, because then you are affected. But if you're not running LPD, no worries here. Uh, looking at the rest of the RCEs, there aren't a lot that are uh, really specifically really cool. Um, there's a virtual network virtualization component. Uh, Microsoft states that by manipulating the content of the memory descriptor list, the attacker could cause unauthorized memory rights or even free a valid block currently used, leading to a guest to host escape. I like guest to host escapes because they are fun. Uh, and that's going to be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, I would also pay attention to the smart screen bug, as that's proved to be a popular target. And right now you're probably thinking, hey, Dustin, didn't you miss one of those bugs that was in the wild? Yes, I did. Uh, and that was reported by uh, our very own Peter Gurness. I have a full blog coming out on this Thursday. Stay tuned for the details. It's really interesting, and it's a follow-on from some of the work that our threat hunting team has been doing for months. So having said that, uh, there's RCE bugs and routing protocols, but these are older routing protocols and they're, they fill up all of these uh, releases, but they just don't do a lot. We don't see them exploited in the wild. Um, so I, I wouldn't pay too much attention. Moving on to our privilege escalation bugs. Uh, we've got 36 of them in this release and most of them just lead to system level access. Like, like I said, for the ones in uh, under active attack. So these are interesting bugs from an exploit point of view, but from a technical point of view, you have an attacker log in, run specially crafted code, boom. Uh, and there are also some cloud-based bugs here, and I, there are some in this release that I want to call out that uh, are just being documented. Uh, Microsoft has already applied their necessary mitigations on the cloud's resources, so that's okay. Um, one of the kernel bugs is a sandbox escape. I like sandbox escapes too, whenever I can escape. Uh, guest to host, sandbox, it's always fun. Now there is a bug in the Azure Stack Hub. This is wild to me. So you have to send someone a JSON file, but then have them not open the JSON file. Because if they open it they, they and review it, they'll, they'll see immediately that it's an invalid URL. Uh, but if you don't open the JSON file, they might be able to uh, get some uh, access to your Azure Stack, which is wild. Seems unlikely, but kind of cool. But the big news and privileged escalation bugs, of course, comes from Hacker Summer Camp, Black Hat, and DEF CON as research uh, presented some Windows downgrade attacks. Now, we've seen downgrade attacks in other products as well. And this is essentially where you take a fully patched system and downgrade it to a vulnerable system where then you can use existing attacks against it, existing vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that have already been patched. Um, so they they showed this. Microsoft, of course, has now announced this. Is, this is public because it is public. Uh, there's not a fix for one of them yet, but Microsoft says that you are protected. So I, I don't know exactly what that is, but definitely pay attention to that one because a, a patch will be coming for it soon. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's interesting. Uh, the, the Teams bug uh, is interesting as well because it allows someone to impersonate someone else and then you might disclose information to them. Uh, like if it's your boss pinging you on teams and like hey what's your social again uh so don't do that um and, and patch that bug um there's also a spoofing bug in dns but there's no details about that so i don't understand what's going on here but usually spoofing bugs in dns mean you you query for something and then you get back wrong results so that could be used for lots of different things Information disclosure bugs are not exciting this month. Most of them are just dumping random pieces of memory. There are a couple that just say they disclose sensitive information. That's, that's a wonderfully ethereal 
description of anything. So it could be anything. Um, the bug in .NET and Visual Studio could disclose targeted emails, but Microsoft doesn't give you any indication of how it would do that. But uh, that's kind of interesting. There is a, uh, an information disclosure bug in Edge Chromium Base that is a lot more interesting though. And in this, uh, an attacker could gain access to anything that it would expose uh, Edge UI permissions, such as your microphone and your speaker that is allowed to uh, be viewed through Edge. So that's kind of cool. So you could exit it. I, I don't know if you can like turn on a camera or see through it or, or listen through the microphones, but it's pretty, pretty interesting. Again, Microsoft is very silent on the denial of service bugs. There are just a handful of them and no t details available. And again, Microsoft, if you're listening, which I don't think you are, please just give us some indication. Is it a permanent DOS? Is it temporary? Does it restart automatically? Is it a blue screen? I mean, these are, these are just basic facts. We wanna know. We're the inquiring public, we wanna know. Uh, and there's one bug in tampering. Now tampering is really kind of an ill-defined category, uh, but it requires a user to open a specially crafted file, yet it also lists the attack vector as network. So I don't know if that means if the file is on an SMB or a shared drive of something, um, and it doesn't provide the results of like what's being tampered with. So I don't know. Uh, but we have seen similar tactics in compressed files uh, used to evade endpoint detection, EDR, XDR, that sort of thing. So I don't know. Um, I would consider that pretty slick. Um, and finally, we got a couple cross-site scripting bugs uh, in Microsoft Dynamics on-premises. Not so exciting. And there are new, new, no new advisories, I should say, but we did see an update to the servicing stack. And that is a quick look, a very quick look at the release. The big news is six O days. So get out there and start testing and patching your systems. Always test before you deploy. Let's not have uh, production being pushed out on a Friday afternoon. I'm not naming names. But anyway, uh, our next Patch Tuesday is gonna be September 10th, and that's almost spooky season. So I will be back to address all the pumpkin spice patches I can find. Until then, stay safe and may all your reboots be smooth and clean.